Chapter 3 As the weeks went on, Kara fell into a routine, rising early to help on the farm, eating delicious home-cooked meals, going to bed tired after a full day of stacking bales of hay, lifting farm machines, and building miles of fences. It's just like if Clark were here, Aunt Martha said, calling Kara's fellow Kryptonian Superman by his Earth name. He's a good boy, Uncle Jonathan said, as he polished one of Superman's trophies. And he's doing well in college, even though they've got him busy all the time. Speaking of school, Aunt Martha said carefully, Kara, it's time you started getting ready for high school. We've enjoyed every minute of having you here, but... Uncle Jonathan nodded, but his eyes looked concerned as Aunt Martha continued. Well, we were thinking of superhero high. You should be with kids your own age. Plus, as much as we love you, there's only so much we can do to help you control your powers. You need to be with experts who can guide you. We're just mere mortals. Kara looked up from the sketch pad where she was doodling a picture of her parents. The Kents were more than mere mortals, she thought. They were Aunt Martha and Uncle Jonathan, and she felt safe with them. Were they trying to get rid of her? Kara knew that her attempts at helping out often caused mayhem. Was this about that incident with the grain silo? She hadn't meant for it to tip over when she accidentally flew into it. When a video of her setting it back on its foundation had been posted online, some people started saying that the girl in the video was Superman's cousin and had even taken to calling her Supergirl. But Superman got to stay here for years, Kara began to protest. Dear girl, Aunt Martha said, your cousin came to us as a baby, and as he grew, so did his superpowers. They developed slowly over several years. But you, Kara, Uncle Jonathan said, piping in, your powers are more than any of us could have imagined, and they keep getting stronger each day. Kara had known that she was going to have to go to school eventually. Her parents would have wanted that. But she had thought that maybe Korrigar Academy, located several sectors away, would be a good choice for her. Some of the galaxy's most powerful teens went there, and like her, most of them were aliens in one way or another. Maybe there she wouldn't feel so out of place. Yet the Kents seemed set on her going to Superman's alma mater. Just look at the website, Uncle Jonathan encouraged her. I think you'll like it, Aunt Martha added, smiling warmly at Kara. Kara tried to return the smile. Back in her room, Kara leaned forward as she watched the Superhero High recruitment video. To her surprise, despite her initial hesitation, she found herself drawn to the school. It looked inviting and exciting, and everyone seemed friendly. She couldn't help getting swept away in the enthusiasm as she clicked through several pages on the school website. The ones Kara liked most featured Wonder Woman. The Amazon warrior princess was so strong and confident, so self-assured. Unlike Kara, Wonder Woman looked like she had everything under control. Kara also read articles about Wonder Woman by a teen reporter named Lois Lane on the Daily Planet's website that covered some of the hero's epic saves when danger threatened the city of Metropolis. Eager to find out more, Kara clicked on a link to something called Harley's Quintessentials, featuring a pigtailed girl named Harley Quinn, who promised, all Harley, all the time giving you the latest in teen superhero news, notes, and gossip. She watched one video, then another, and another, and another. There seemed to be an endless supply of Harley's quintessentials, segments of superhero high students crashing into walls and one another, overturning armored cars by accident, causing havoc in the chemistry lab, and having bad hair days. Kara loved the laughs the clips gave her, especially because they made her feel like she wasn't the clumsiest kid on the planet. But still, she thought wistfully, if she could just be a little more like Wonder Woman, then maybe she'd fit in. Even on the Harley's Quintessentials blooper reels, Wonder Woman looked regal. Kara adjusted the headband that kept her hair out of her face and tied the laces on her red high-top sneakers. She looked at herself in the mirror and straightened her blue shirt with her family crest in the center. Clearing her throat, she extended her hand and practiced saying, Nice to meet you, Wonder Woman. My name is Kara zor -El. Then, on a whim, she tried out, My name is Supergirl. Maybe going to Superhero High was a good idea after all. 
Kara spent the rest of the afternoon researching. Superhero High had just won the 100th Super Triathlon, thanks to Wonder Woman and her team, and it was known for its reputation of training the best and brightest young superheroes. Just look at how well her cousin had done for himself. On the other hand, Korrigar Academy boasted an extensive roster of powerful and famous alumni too. And there were no tests. But Superhero High had Wonder Woman. Plus, its principal, Amanda Waller, had reached out to Kara personally, sending her a video invitation that said, I sincerely hope you'll join our Superhero High family. Then again, Korrigar Academy was known for having lots of transfer students. It had one of the highest enrollments of aliens in the solar system. It was a difficult decision, but it was one she would have to make for herself. Whatever school Kara picked would surely have a big impact on her life. Kara, it's time to go. Are you ready? Aunt Martha called from the bottom of the stairs, bringing her back to reality. Yes, be right there, Kara yelled back. Using her x-ray vision, she scanned her room for her suitcase and saw it buried under a pile of blankets and clothes. Like a whirlwind, Kara packed and cleaned the room. And mere moments later, she was at the top of the stairwell. Here I come, she called out, right before tripping and tumbling down the stairs. Her suitcase went flying, opening in midair, and sending everything spilling out, including a brochure for Korrigar Academy. Thank you for considering Korrigar Academy, a robotic voice intoned from the brochure as it sailed through the room. Located in Space Sector 1417, Korrigar is your far-off destination for higher education. We are a test-optional school, no grades. You will become your best, because we accept nothing less. Join us at Korrigar Academy. As Kara tried to catch her falling suitcase and its contents, she bounced against the walls, breaking furniture, destroying Aunt Martha's collection of ceramic owls, and bowling down Uncle Jonathan's shelves of antique railroad lanterns. Well, that was impressive, Aunt Martha said, as she crawled out from under the dining room table. Kara surveyed the destruction. It looked as though a hurricane had blown through the house. Maybe it had and its name was Supergirl. Thank you for helping us dispose of these old things, Aunt Martha said cheerfully. This gives us an excuse to redecorate. Uncle Jonathan came in from the barn and surveyed the room. Nice job, he said, unfazed by the mess. Supergirl hung her head, embarrassed. Superhero High will help you control your powers, Aunt Martha promised, putting an arm around her. You're going to love it there. They graduate the best superheroes in the business, Uncle Jonathan added confidently. Doubt washed over Kara. She knew that Superhero High had sky-high standards, the rigorous training, the endless tests, the pressure to succeed. She was just a girl from Krypton who couldn't control her most basic abilities. What if she didn't want to be a superhero? Had anyone asked her about that? How can I be a superhero? Kara wondered. I can't even save my super self from being such a super mess. She looked at the Korrigar Academy brochure on the floor. It was saying, join us, join us, join us. Kara snatched it up and threw it away, hoping the Kents hadn't seen it. Kara bid her aunt and uncle goodbye and began her ascent into the sky, suitcase in hand. She flew around the planet a couple of times to help shake off her uncertainty. As she looked down, Karen noted how beautiful the earth was. It was like a colorful quilt stitched together with many remarkable cultures and landscapes. Using her super hearing, she tuned in on the music across the continents, pausing to listen to a girl about her age playing the violin with such passion that it made Kara stronger just listening to it. Instinctively, Kara clutched her crystal necklace. The necklace began to glow. If only her parents could experience this. Her father had always wanted to travel. She wished they could experience this together. You have the heart of a hero, she could hear her mother saying. Always do your best, Kara, and you'll be fine, I promise. With her mother's words ringing in her ears, Kara flew faster. As she crossed each country, she felt braver, more confident, and eager to start anew. Soon, she pierced the clouds, waving as she shot past airplanes and soared toward a city called Metropolis, where a new life awaited her.